<laughs> Come and get your copy of Energy Glut, the radical alternative to motorised madness. The decarbonisation of transport will make us healthier, happier, fitter and leaner and free from the environmental genocide that is climate change. <laughs> Walkers of the world unite, you've got nothing to lose but cellulite. <laughs> What's that, Maze? You want to buy a copy? It's two quid or 300 euros. <laughs> there you go, mate. This week's a radical history of fossil fuels ever since their formation 150 million years ago. There you go. You've dropped it, mate. And it's all wet now in the cut of this rain. All right, I'll explain it to you. I'm going to explain why Fossil fuels are making us fat and miserable. I'm a dinosaur. We're 150 million years ago. There's a big, angry brute. But I'm not where the action is. The action's out where you are. Billions of tiny phytoplankton are sipping carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and forming carbohydrate. But they're gonna die just like you are and their bodies are going to sink to the bottom of those prehistoric oceans where they'll get covered in layers and layers of sand and silt and they'll be squeezed from above and heated from below and boiled into a jam called crude oil. Now that jam stayed there, locked away underground, but because of the slip and the slide of the Earth's crust, it bubbled to the surface. Now nothing happened until 1885, when a nasty capitalist called George Bissell was visiting his grandmother in New Hampshire, and he called in on his old university professor, and he saw a jar on the mantelpiece, and it was rock oil. And George Bissell said, I wonder if I could sell that. And he did. He sold rock oil, and Bissell's rock oil business lit up the world for a long time. And then something happened. <coughs> Edison invented the light bulb and the electricity generation to go, industry to go with it and Bissell's rock oil business was going out of business. <coughs> but then another nasty carpetalist came along called Henry Ford. And Henry Ford did something really amazing. He motorised human movement. So he put our comrades on production lines to build masses and masses of motor cars and the traditional way of moving up till then was this way. I've been practicing this for 48 years. But after, after Bissell, after Ford, the traditional way of getting around was like this. So we move more than ever before in the history of people on the planet but without moving. And that did a tremendous thing to our energy output. Now, we like to eat because we're humans, but if we don't move our bodies, we're in energy imbalance, all of us. Now this, if I measured the body mass or the, the fatness of everybody in London, you'd get a distribution, it'd look like this. There's a few really skinny people down here. We commonly know, know those as Japanese. <laughs> and there's a few really fat people over there we commonly know those as fat bastards, <laughs> but most people are in the middle. Now what's happened in society is the whole population distribution of body mass index has shifted this way. Even the thin people are fat. Now this is a weirdly shaped personal weight problem. <laughs> this is a really important public health problem. <laughs> so as our weights increase that way, We've, we've increased the incidence of cardiovascular disease, stroke, lung, uh, not lung cancer, cancer. Now, so the Japanese, pe Japanese women are the thinnest people in the world and they live the longest. Now, my partner's Japanese. Now, if you can't be a Japanese woman, you should live with a Japanese woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope some of that longevity will rub off on me. <laughs> And if it doesn't rub off on me, at least the rubbing's fun. <laughs> but another thing that's happened that's really important because movement is human Prozac. It's population Prozac. And as we've moved 
less than before. Our body mass index has gone this way, but our happiness has gone this way. And that's why Jeremy Clarkson's so miserable. There's only two parts of his body that move. His mouth and his right foot. So we don't have to be worried about climate change mitigation because it could be the best thing that's ever happened to us. And that's what I believe. So it's, it provides unrivaled opportunities for human happiness. Now I was leaving here today and my, and my daughter said to me, she said, Daddy, don't go and sell the energy glut again. Listen to my joke. I said, what's your joke? She said, why did the chicken cross the road? So I, I, I put her on my knee, I said, Megan, <laughs> Daddy's working for a society where all chickens can safely cross roads everywhere without having their motives questioned. Thank you. <laughs>